today we will be discussing on fuzzy rule base and approximate reasoning. This will be lecture 3 in this model 2 of intelligent control which is fuzzy logic the model 2. Uh, last class we discussed about relation, we learnt what is a relation, fuzzy relation. Okay. Today we will be dealing with the inference mechanism from a fuzzy rule base. So, what is a rule base? Okay. So, topics to be covered today are linguistic variables, fuzzy rule base, fuzzy implication relations, fuzzy compositional rules, approximate reasoning for discrete fuzzy sets, approximate reasoning for continuous fuzzy set and summary. What is fuzzy linguistic variable? Algebraic variables take numbers as values while linguistic variables take words or sentences as values. We already know that if I have a variable x, then if it is algebraic variable, then it can it may take natural numbers or real numbers depending on what kind of variable it is. Similarly, a fuzzy variable x will take values which are linguistic values. Okay. Like for example, let x be a linguistic variable with a level temperature. Okay. So, the universe of discourse is temperature. So, in that universe, I am looking at a fuzzy variable x when I describe the temperature. The fuzzy set temperature denoted as T can be written as T very cold, cold, normal, hot, very hot from place to place uh, people may use different connotation for describing the temperature, but we have taken for example, you know, for example sake we have taken this particular set to describe temperature in natural language. So, looking at the temperature one may say it is very cold or cold, normal, hot or very hot. So, here temperature is the base variable which is also called as the universe of discourse. Each item in this fuzzy set is a fuzzy linguistic value for the variable x. So, if temperature is a fuzzy variable, then the linguistic values for this fuzzy variable uh, is very cold, cold, normal, hot, very hot. Now, we will take some other examples of uh, linguistic variables. For example, the uh, we can talk about age, which is one linguistic variable. Height is another linguistic variable. So I let me put it. This is linguistic variable and one is as another is height. Then the linguistic values for as for as would be I can say young, old, very old. So, this would be the the linguistic values for age, whereas for height we can say short, medium and tall. So, these are the linguistic values for height and for each category 
we can say that is a defined dynamic range. So, the age uh, young age we can define age we can define of course, uh, uh, 0 to 100. I do not think anybody lives uh, very rarely people live uh, more than 100. So, we can say 0 to 100. So, if I say young uh, probably the prime should be around uh, uh, anybody who is less than 25 degree uh, sorry uh, around 25 years would be young. Old would be say I can define around 50 year and very old those who are around 70 year. So, like that we can define uh, the dynamic range uh, for uh, age uh, whose linguistic values are young, old and very old. So, this is years. Similarly, short, medium, tall the height uh, we can easily say uh, 3 to 7 feet. Hmm. Uh, we rarely see a person who is less than 3 feet and uh, uh, also th those persons are very rare who are above 7 feet. So, between 3 to 7 feet we can define uh, the dynamic range for the height and uh, and the the linguistic values can be ascribed as uh, short, medium and tall. And then after dynamic range then we define membership function. Okay. So, how do we define given a s we have to find out how much that membership young or like for example, if somebody's age is 40. So, how young he is membership value may be for 40 year old we can say how young he is is 0 0.5. How old he is maybe he is also equally same you know he is in middle between young and old. So, we can say 0 0.5 membership in new old. So, a 40 year old person may be ascribed as a membership function uh, under the category young to be 0.5 and membership function under the, under the category old to be 0.5. Similarly, for height also we can so define mu short membership function and mu tall and so forth. As many uh, linguistic values are there, so that many uh, given a data uh, that many given a crisp value for age or for height we get that many membership function as many linguistic uh, values are there. For each linguistic value we get a specific membership function. So, once we talked about linguistic uh, values now we will introduce another term called linguistic modifier like consider a fuzzy set young. So, now if you look at young uh, the way this set is those who are 20 years old uh, the membership function young is 0 0.8 for 30 years old 0 0.6 for 40 0 0.2 and 60 obviously is not no more young. So, 0. So, if a fuzzy set is given young okay, which is a subset uh, uh, of a fuzzy set called age. Uh, so, this is I can say this is a subset of age. Age is the uh, superset or the universal set for defining young. Now, the linguistic variable very young where very is the modifier. So, this very young once I define what is young in very young very is the modifier very is the modifier. So, this very young probably we can define that their membership function that as very young to be young square that is young square means what this membership function gets squared that is 0 0.8 becomes 0 0.64 0 0.6 0 0.36 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.10 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 0 0.14 0 0.15 0 0.16 0 0.17 0 0
point 0.2, point 0 0.04 and 0 of course, 0. So, a given a specific set if I ascribe to this set and modify, eh, so probably we can define some kind of rule by which the very young can be defined. It is not that always young, uh, very young will be young square, but this is just one way uh, how to evaluate uh, a linguistic variable uh, uh, or a, sorry linguistic value very young given young. Okay. Similarly, the linguistic variable very very young can be written by induction as again young 4. So, if I define very young to be young square, then very very young has to be young to the power 4. So, obviously, in that case 20 is 0 0.4096, which is uh, uh, 0 0.64 the membership function square. So, you define uh, 0 0.64 square is 0 0.4096. 0 0.36 is 0 0.1296, 0 0.04 is 0 0.0016 and similarly 0 is 0. Uh, so, this is uh, this is a notion of modifier for the uh, linguistic modifier. Now, uh, another example similarly if A is a Fuji set extremely A I can define to be A q, very A is A square more or less a is a to the power half, slightly a is a to the power 1 uh, q, uh, a to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, cube root. So, cube root of a square root of a, a square and a q depending on whether the modifier is extremely or very more or less or slightly. Okay. This is where uh, we can deal with uh, linguistic modifiers. Okay. So, we gave some idea about uh, uh, the linguistic values and linguistic variables. Why these are necessary? Because in traditional sense, when we express uh, the world in knowledge, we express them in natural language. So, here it is and from computational perspective, such worldly language uh, sorry worldly knowledge can be expressed in terms of rule based systems. So, worldly knowledge is very conveniently expressed in natural language. Okay. When we describe the worldly knowledge natural language is the best way to describe them. The rule base is one of the ways to represent knowledge using natural language for computational purpose of course. Okay. A generic form of a rule base is as follows. Uh, so, so what we said that the worldly knowledge can be represented in terms of rule base uh, and a rule base is described as if premise or ante ant uh, antecedent uh, then conclusion uh, is consequent. So, the if premise that is if uh, or, or that, that can be easily said the above form is commonly referred to as the if then rule based form. It typically expresses an inference such that if we know a fact we can infer or derive another fact. So, given a rule I can derive another rule or given a rule uh, uh, if I know a rule uh, and associated relation then uh, given another rule I can uh, predict what should be the consequence. So, uh, this is a, a fuzzy rule base. So, uh, any uh, worldly knowledge can be expressed in form in the form of a rule base. Now, when I talk about fuzzy rule base, fuzzy information can be represented in form of a rule base which consists of a set of rules in conventional antecedent and consequent form such as if x is a then y is b where a and b represent fuzzy proposition sets. Now, suppose we introduce a new antecedent say a dash and we consider the following rule if x is a dash then y is b dash from information derived from rule 1 is it possible to derive the consequent in rule 2 which is b dash. 
So, this is the question. What we are trying to answer in a fuzzy rule base, fuzzy rule base consists of set of rules. So, from these rules like if I know rule 1, if I know what is A, what is B, if I have derived them and if I have the knowledge of A dash, can I compute what is B dash. So, this is a very simple way. Now, I am presenting the problem to all of you that is rule 1 we know. We know what is the set A and set B. In rule 2 we know only A dash, but not B dash. Can we infer B dash? This is the question. The answer is yes. The consequent B dash in rule 2 can be found from composition operation B dash equal to A dash. Uh, this is called compositional rule of inference, uh, the compositional operator with R. Okay. So, this is a, uh, cut. So, fuzzy, we talked about fuzzy rule base. It's, it consists of set of rules. Now, how do we infer knowledge from this rule base? So, this is called the, there are there are certain steps. First, we will understand what is fuzzy implication relations. So, a fuzzy implication relation for a given rule if x is a i then y is b i is formally denoted by r i x y is the relation matrix whose elements are given by mu r i x y. And this mu r i x y uh, is constructed or is computed uh, by various implication rules. So, there are various kinds of implication rules. Now, we will understand them. So, the so what is the implication rule? If p then q, this is called implication rule, where both p and q are fuzzy proposition. So, p can be if x is a i, then y is b i, but p also can be multiple uh, uh, propositions like if x is a i, x 1 is a i, x 2 is b i, uh, sorry uh, 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 sorry x 1 is a 1, x 2 is a 2 and so on, then uh, what is y. So, now let us take this simple uh, operation relation fuzzy rule, if x is a i, then y is b i. So, this I will say p and this I will say q. If p then q. Okay. So, now we will talk about Dinas Rusher implication. So, in this if p then q states that p is true, but q is false is impossible. That is in this proposition, in this rule, if I say if p is true, then to say that q, q is false is impossible. That means, if p is true, then q is false is a false statement, is not possible. This is one argument. So, what does it mean? That means, p which is true and not q q is false. So, not q is true is false. Okay. So, using de Morgan's law we can show that p and not q is same as not p and a or q. Thus, the relational matrix can be computed for 
this particular uh, uh, relation not is mu r x y is maximum, but this is using uh, mean max uh, sorry this is, this is maximum because or means maximum and not p means 1 minus mu a i x p is if x equal to a i. So, obviously, a i stands for uh, sorry the membership function of for given a crisp value is mu a i x where x is the a specific crisp value. Mm. So, crisp value of S, uh, the x. So, mu a i x is the fuzzy membership function of p. Not p is 1 minus p u mu a i x and similarly for q the membership function is mu b i y. So, the maximum value is, is comes because of r operation this or this. So, obviously, the relation uh, 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 between uh, from A to B is defined by this expression. Uh, now, we will go to the another type of implication relation, which is very popular in control uh, engineering as well as fuzzy systems, which is called Mamdani implication. In this, when fuzzy if then rules are locally true, then using Mamdani implication, P implies Q implies P and Q is true. This is the end operation P and Q both simultaneously true. That is because we, we say that each rule is locally true. So, if P is true, then Q is true. So, we do not ascribe any other means by which q can be true. Okay. So, thus the relational matrix can be computed using any of the following expressions. The first one we have already explained in the relation uh, class that the, this is mean max operation sorry mean operation. So, or product operation. So, this is a mean or product. Okay. So, what you are seeing is that I find out the element of the relation matrix associated with the rule uh, p implies q uh, is that uh, <coughs> the minimum of mu a i x and mu b i y using Mamdani implication. So, if uh, x is uh, x is a 1, then y is b 1 or here we have written a i and b i. So, if x is a i, then y is b i. So, the relation matrix associated with this a which is R the relation matrix, we can put like this, where the uh, <coughs> uh, the if uh, this is my x, this is my y. So, any element typical element associated with the x i is minimum of mu x uh, in fuzzy set a i and mu i in fuzzy set b i. So, this is this is what each element in R is computed using is computed using either this formula or this formula. So, Mamnadi implication rule is widely used in fuzzy system and fuzzy control engineering. Uh, uh, in this if the temperature is hot then fan should run fast. This rule does not imply if temperature is cold, then fan should run slow. Means each rule is independent; they are locally true. We can't infer. Fuzzy implication relation, another category which we will call Jade implication, 
this is if p implies q may imply either p and q are true or phi is false. Thus, that is what we are saying that just like in local Mamdani rule, we say p and q are true, p, either p uh, imply either p and q are true or p is false. Thus, p implies q means uh, So, P and Q are simultaneously true, which is Mamdani local rule, or if P is false, then P implies Q has no meaning, or P is false. Okay. So, so this has taken an extra uh, uh, logic that is P and Q or not p. Thus, the relational matrix can be computed as follows. So, if I look at this, so what is p and q? p and q means minimum of mu a x and mu b y and what is not p which is 1 minus mu a i x and this entire thing has to be maximum of minimum of this and this which is this statement. So, mu the relational matrix elements are computed using this particular uh, expression. So, given a set of rules uh, we just learnt various schemes by which we can construct a relational matrix between the antecedent and the consequent. The next step would be to utilize this relational matrix for inference. This method is commonly known as compositional rule of inference that is associated with each rule we have a relational matrix. So, given a rule means given a relational matrix and given another antecedent how can I compute a consequent? This is the prime question that we are being asked we are asking. So, this is derived using fuzzy compositional rules. So, following are different rules for a fuzzy composition operation that is B equal to A composition R. R is the relation, R is the relational matrix associated with a specific rule. A is a new antecedent which is known R is known, B is the new consequent for the new antecedent A. So, I have to find out what is B for this new A given R and that is computed by A composition R and we have already discussed in the relation class there are various methods max mean which is very popular. First we compute mean and then max. Okay. So, similarly max product uh, instead of mean we take the product and compute what is the max <coughs> maximum value. Similarly, mean max instead of max mean it is mean max first max and then mean max max and mean mean the various one can employ looking at the behavior of a specific data. Now, we will take an example. We are given a rule if x is a then y is b, where a is this fuzzy set 0 0.2 for 1, 0 0.5 for 2, 0 0.7 for 3 this is all discrete fuzzy set and b is another fuzzy set which defines fuzzy membership 0 0.6 for 5, 0 0.8 for 7, 0 0.4 for 9. So, question is infer b dash for another rule if x is a dash then y is b dash where a dash is known. So, what we are asking a is known, b is known, a dash is known. What we have to find out? What is b dash? So, 
point in for v dash. This is the question that is being asked. Hope you understand. So, now using Mamdani implication relation, first we will find out between a the first rule that is if x is equal to a then y is b. The relational matrix associated with this rule is so for r how do we compute? Now, a elements are 1, 2, 3, b elements are 5, 7, 9 and we have to find out now for point 2. Here we compare with all the elements in point B and with each element we found what is the minimum. Okay, the minimum is always point 2. So, hence and the maximum of that is always point 2. Similarly, uh, so from 1 to uh, I, I have to find out relational matrix between A and B. Mamnad in principle means minimum. So, between 1 and 5, 1 associated with point 2 and 5 is associated with point 6. So, minimum is point 2. Similarly, 1 is associated with point 2, 7 is associated with point 8. So, 1 and 7 the minimum is point 2. Similarly, 1 is associated with point 2, 9 is associated with point 4. So, for from 1 to 9 the minimum membership is point 2. Similarly, you can see that between from 2 to all the element 5, 7, 9 the minimum are 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. Similarly, from 3 to 5, 7, 9 we have 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and 0 0.4. These are the minimum uh, fuzzy membership between uh, an element in x uh, in A to element in B that is how we compute the relational matrix. Once we compute the relational matrix, then we use max mean composition relation to find out what is B dash, which is A dash, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.3 composition R and you can compute. So, this is my R. So, what I will do? This is my R and I have to find out uh, my matrix uh, this is 0 0.5, 0 0.9 and 0 0.3. Okay. So, this composition R is you can easily see I take this row matrix uh, row vector put along the column matrix. Uh, so, I see what is the minimum for each case you can easily see 0 0.2 will be minimum here, 0 0.5 will be minimum here, 0 0.3 and maximum is 0 0.5. So, the first element is 0 0.5. Again I take this place in parallel with this column and then I find first minimum here 0 0.2, here 0 0.5, here 0 0.3 and then maximum is again 0 0.5. And again I take this same uh, row vector put along this uh, uh, column vector and then I find here minimum is 0 0.2, here minimum is 0 0.4 and here minimum is 0 0.3 and maximum is 0 0.4 and this is the relation, this is the answer. So, this is the our B dash. So, given A this is my B dash using a fuzzy compositional uh, uh, principle or relation. So, there are other mechanism also we uh, discussed. So, for the same example if you use max mean you get B dash max product you get another B dash mean max you get another. So, you see that mean max and max mean uh, they are same for this example max max you see that the all the fuzzy membership are the maximum values and mean mean they are the minimum values here. Okay. So, now the uh, question is that what is approximate reasoning? Approximate reasoning means uh, given any logical system we do not have you know, it is very difficult to make an exact reasoning. That is why uh, from engineering perspective even we are more liberal uh, we do not want to be so precise as long as 
our system works, we are happy. If our control system works, we are happy. So, uh, approximate reasoning. So, we have set of rules. So, we use a specific compositional rule of inference and then we infer the knowledge or the consequence. So, given a rule R, so R is the relational matrix associated with a specific rule and given a condition A, the inferencing B is done using compositional rule of inference B equal to A composition R. The fuzzy sets associated with each rule base may be discrete or continuous, that is A may be discrete or A and B they may be discrete or continuous. A rule base may contain single rule or multiple rule. Various inference mechanism, see if it is a continuous I cannot define what is R relational matrix, it is very difficult because it will have infinite values. So, R is not defined. So, that is why for continuous uh, the method is uh, we apply compositional rule of inference, but the method to compute is different. A rule base may contain single rule or multiple rules. Various inference mechanism for a single rule are enumerated. The inference mechanism, various mechanism means we talked about min max, max min, max max, min min and so forth. The inference mechanism for multiple rules, okay. so this uh, um, single rule, now we will take one by one example, <coughs> single rule with a discrete fuzzy set. So, we talked about a fuzzy set that may consist of a single rule or multiple rule, it can be discrete fuzzy set or a continuous fuzzy set. So, we will take, uh, we will under, we'll try to understand how to make approximate reasoning for such uh, rule base uh, using the methods that we just enumerated that for each rule we compute what is the relational matrix, if it is a discrete fuzzy set and then we use compositional uh, rule of inference to compute the consequence given an antecedent. So, that is for discrete fuzzy set. So, again we have already talked about this, but again for your understanding I am presenting another example for single rule with a discrete fuzzy set. Now, rule 1 if temperature is hot then fans should run first, if temperature is moderately hot then fans should run moderately fast. Now, in this example we are given the temperature is in degree Fahrenheit and speed is in expressed in 1000 rpm. Okay. So, the fuzzy set for hot H is for 70 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, 90 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Fahrenheit, the membership values are 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. Similarly, for uh, the, the fuzzy set F, which uh, the fast, the run should run fast. So, for fast the fuzzy set is for 1000 rpm membership is 0 0.3, 2000 rpm membership 0 0.5, 3000 rpm membership 0 0.7 and 4000 rpm membership 0 0.9. Now, given H days which is moderately hot to be for 70, moderately hot means is little more hot. So, same temperature obviously, their corresponding uh, membership values will reduce, because if I am de describing moderately hot, then same temperature they will have the membership values will be less. So, you can easily see here that 70 instead of 0.4, now it is 0 0.2, 80 instead of 0 0.6 is 0 0.4, 90 instead of 0 0.8 is 0 0.6 and 100 instead of 0 0.9 is 0 0.8, this is moderately hot. Now, the question is find F dash. So, I wish you are clear with this uh, question. The question is very simple. We are given a rule 1. We have defined what is the fuzzy set hot and fuzzy set first by these two uh, statements. And then the, in the second rule uh, for moderately hot we know the fuzzy set. We do not know what is 
the fuzzy set corresponding to moderately hot that is moderately fast. We do not know this fuzzy set moderately fast. So, find out f dash okay. if h then f if h dash then f dash find out f dash. So, first we what we do? So, we first of corresponding to rule 1 we found out what is r. So, this is for rule 1. Okay. So, we knew that the membership functions were for h h membership functions were 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 and uh, fast the membership functions were 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. So, if you look at this so, this is my h values, the, 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 uh, the, the crisp values 70 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Fahrenheit, 90 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Fahrenheit and this is uh, my uh, speed 1000 rpm, 2000 rpm, 3000 rpm and 4000 rpm. So, between uh, uh, 70 and 1000 rpm, the entry would be minimum of this 2 which is 0 0.3. Similarly, between uh, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5, uh, this one, the minimum would be again 0 0.4. Uh, sorry, it will be 0 0.4, and between 0 0.4 and 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0 0.4. Similarly, we go to the next one, which is 0 0.6. So, for 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.3, minimum 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, minimum 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 minimum 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.6. So, similarly, you can fill all other uh, 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 the, uh, the cell here with, the, with their values 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. Okay. So, this is my relation matrix associated with rule 1, if h then f. Now, what I have to do? I have to find out f des given h dash using fuzzy compositional rule of inference, which is represented like this. So, f dash is h dash compositional rule of inference with r. So, if you compute using this is mean max mean composition operation. So, first we take the mean and then compute. So, you take this four elements, place it here. Okay plus it here uh, sorry not this element h dash is given as h dash is given as 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 this is my h dash moderately hot and uh, i have to do compositional inference between h dash and r so, all that again I am repeating the so that you understand how to compute that. You put this row vector along this column vector first for each element you find out what is the minimum. So, you see that here it is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 and the maximum of that is 0 0.3. Similarly, you take again put it here along uh, vertically. So, here the minimum is 0 0.2 here 0 0.4, here 0 0.5, here 0 0.5 and maximum is 0 0.5 and so on you will see here it is 0 0.7, but in this case you find instead of if you take this here, here it is 0 0.2, here 0 0.4, here 0 0.6 and here 0 0.8 and maximum is 0 0.8. All right. So, f dash is 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So, that is how we uh, infer or we do approximate reasoning for a rule base. This is a very simple case. Now, we will go to little uh, more difficult which is multiple rule with the discrete fuzzy sets. What we say? If height is tall, this is there are two rules now. Rule 1 is 
if height is tall then speed is high rule 2 if height is medium then speed is moderate okay this is uh, describing uh, a rule for a person how fast he can walk so normally those who are tall they can walk very fast and those who are short naturally their speed will be less so this is one fuzzy rule that expresses the speed of a person while walking so if height is tall then speed is high if height is medium then speed is moderate and for this the fuzzy memberships are defined tall high medium and moderate so tall is 0 0.5 0 0.81 for various speed like 5 6 and 7 and speed high which is for 5 meter per second and 7 meter per second 9 meter per second uh, the corresponding membership values are 0 0.4, 0 0.7 and 0 0.9. Similarly, H 2 uh, which is uh, medium height uh, the corresponding fuzzy membership you can easily see uh, the when I say <coughs> medium in this fuzzy set 5 has 0.6, 6 has 0.7 and 7 has 0 0.6. Uh, whereas, uh, the moderate uh, the moderate uh, speed is 0 0.6 uh, for uh, 5 meter per second, 0 0.8 for 7 meter per second and 0 0.7 for 9 meter per second. If this is the fuzzy set given, now the question is given h dash which is above average and the corresponding fuzzy set is 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 for three different heights. Find S dash the speed above normal. So, we are given I hope the question should be very clear to you. We have two rules if height is tall then speed is high, tall is defined, high is defined. If height is medium then speed is moderate both medium as well as moderate are already defined fuzzy sets they are all discrete fuzzy sets. Now, you are presented with new data and what is that new data? Now, you are presented with a data called above average which is 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 for three different height for 5, 6, 7. Then find S dash equal to above normal that is if height is above average then the speed should be above normal. So, how do we do it? The solution of this example. So, we have two rules. So, naturally we will have two relational matrix R 1 for rule 1, R 2 for rule 2. I will not go in detail how do we compute. It is simply uh, you go to the antecedent and consequent, look at the membership function, find the minimum for each entry. That is like here, these are the height and these are the speed 5, 6, 7 feet is the height 5, 7 and 9 meter square meter per second are the speed of the individuals. So, now uh, you check the, uh, the fuzzy sets and find out corresponding to each fuzzy set what is the minimum membership function. Okay. So, 5, 5 you will find the membership function 0 0.4 minimum 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. You can verify this. Similarly, R2 can be found out. Okay, finding the uh, again minim, taking the minimum membership entry between these two uh, fuzzy sets. That is, fuzzy set. Uh, if I say this is fuzzy set A, and this is sorry, this is uh, actually uh, what we say h 1 and s 1. So, this is h 1 and s 1 and this is h 2 and s 2. Okay. So, you look at these two fuzzy sets find out what is the minimum entries for each relation. <coughs> then s this above normal how do you compute because we have now two relation matrix is very simple. So, we do two composition uh, uh, operation 
h dash composition with r 1, h dash composition r 1 this one, again h dash composition r 2 and then we take the maximum of that, maximum of these two. So, you can easily see maximum of h dash composition r 1, h dash composition r 2. So, you can easily see this particular expression is same as h dash composition, because h dash is common composition max of r 1 and r 2. So, this is r 1 and r 2. So, you look at all those entries, wherever it is the maximum values like 0 0.4, 0 0.6 maximum 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 maximum 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 maximum 0 0.6 you see the last element here 0 0.9 here 0 0.6. So, this will be 0 0.9. So, like that r 1 and r 2 all entries whatever the maximum values you put these values here. So, that is called maximum r 1 and r 2 and take a composition with h dash. So, h dash composition max of r 1 r 2 h dash is already given as 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. If you do this composition you get 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. I hope this clears you your concept how do we compute or we do approximate reasoning in a rule base when there are similarly if there are multiple rules we have no problem we can go ahead uh, uh, with the same principle. Now, the, uh, the, the last uh, section that we will be covering today is the multiple rules with continuous fuzzy sets. We talked about discrete fuzzy set but if it is continuous fuzzy sets. Eh? So, how do we deal with that? So, normally a continuous fuzzy system with two non interactive inputs x 1 and x 2 which are antecedents and a single output y the consequent is described by a collection of r linguistic if then rules, where the rule looks like, like this if x is a 1 k and x 2 is a 2 k then y k is b k, where k is 1, 2 up to r. So, this is the kth rule and similarly, we can have rule 1, rule 2, rule 3 up to rule r. Whereas, in this particular rule a 1 k and a 2 k are the fuzzy sets representing kth antecedent pairs and b k are the fuzzy sets representing kth consequent. In the following presentation, uh, what we will do now, <coughs> uh, we will take a two input system sorry two input system and two rule system just to illustrate how do we infer from a, a rule base uh, where, where the fuzzy sets are continuous. The inputs to the system are crisp values and we use a max main inference method. So, kindly uh, pay attention because this is very important uh, 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 concept here we will be presenting. So, we have two rules here you can easily see we have presented graphically rule 1 is. So, you can see there are two variables x 1, x 2, x 1 and x 2 there are two fuzzy variables and for each rule we have a consequent y. Okay. So, first rule what it says if x 1 is a 1 1 and x 2 is a 2 1 then y is b 1. Similarly, if x 1 is a 1 2 x 2 is a 2 2 then y is b 2. Okay. So, now how do we infer given a crisp input a new input is given okay. crisp input in the uh, domain of x 1 another crisp input in the domain of x 2. Okay. Like there can be a system whose two variables can be temperature as well as pressure. So, you can e th easily think x 1 to be the temperature x 2 to be the pressure. Okay. So, in that case uh, you know you say for example, for a particular given system you found out the temperature to be 50 degree centigrade and pressure to be some value. Okay. So, given these two quantities crisp quantities how do we infer what should be my y. Okay. So, to do that 
I will just explain to you how this. So, crisp input is given okay, temperature. So, you find out corresponding membership values here. So, this is the corresponding corresponding to this crisp input the membership value in rule 1 we get this value which is mu a 1 1 and for same crisp input this uh, rule 2 will provide you mu a 1 2. Now, uh, in the second uh, fuzzy variable given crisp input rule 1 will compute you see that this one will compute mu a 2 1 and for the second one the second rule the same crisp input would this one which is mu a 2 2. So, once we find out these membership values what we do we graphically we see which is minimum between mu a 1 1 and mu a 2 1. So, the minimum is mu a 2 1 we take that and we set this area in consequence. Okay. Now, we take the second rule we find between mu, mu a 1 2 and mu a 2 2 the minimum is mu a 1 2. So, we take that minimum and set the area and consequent part of this rule 2. Now, graphically add these two taking the maximum. So, max of this so first mean and then max. So, you can easily see when I overlap this figure this figure over this figure I get this particular figure. So, you overlap this figure this second figure on the first figure or first figure on the second figure and take the resultant shaded area. After taking this resultant shaded area you find out the one of the. So, once you find the shaded area the next uh, part to find out what see what is y uh, given a crisp value is there are many methods, but we will focus in this class or in this uh, course only one method that is center of gravity method. So, obviously, if I take this figure find out what is the center of gravity. So, this is this value y star. Okay. So, crisp output can be obtained using various methods one of the most common method is center of gravity method the resulting crisp output is denoted as y star in the figure this is y star. So, what we learnt in this given a crisp input 1 and crisp input 2 and given two fuzzy rules how do we infer correspondingly a crisp output. So, our data is crisp, but we are doing fuzzy computation hence rules are fuzzy we take this data to the fuzzy rule base and then fuzzify them through fuzzification process graphically we find what is the net shaded area using max principle shaded area for each rule in consequent we found out taking mean principle taking max principle we found out the resultant area and then y star is this center of gravity of this area. So, finally, the summary in this lecture following topics we covered linguistic variables and fuzzy rule based systems, various fuzzy implication relations, approximate reasoning for discrete fuzzy set and then finally, approximate reasoning for continuous fuzzy sets. Thank you very much.